Yo, what's going on, snipers, and welcome back to our Detroit Rovings franchise mode here in NHL 21. So, in last episode, we had free agency, and we started up the season simulation, and we've off, we're off to a really good start. We're playing a lot better than we did last year at this stage, kind of like reversed of what we would be probably at that. Like, I think we were last year at this stage. I think we were like 14-24 uh, and something. I can't even remember exactly, but. We didn't have a good record at all, and we finished one of the worst teams in the league last year. But this year, we're off to a really good start, mainly because Isaac Dika is over point per game. He's scoring goals. And also, Vili Savonen has... Or, not Vili Savonen. Is it Vili Savonen? Vili Savonen was our former defenseman. I don't remember his first name now. Kari Savonen, there you go. Uh, Kari Savonen has decided to wake up and score a lot of goals again at the age of 38. Last year, he only had 31 goals through 82 games. But so far this year, he's got 29 goals in 41 games. He's on pace for over 50 goals, maybe even a 60-goal season, which would be pretty nuts, especially at that age. And, yeah, he's over 900 career goals now. So, yeah, hoping he could uh, continue to score a lot of goals down the stretch because that is the main reason I think we are in a playoff spot right now is because when he's scoring, that team is our team is a lot better offensively. So... And uh, most of his goals are probably on the power play, too. And our power play has been really good this year. And same with our penalty kill has been decent, too. So we've been getting better in terms of everything so far this year, which is great. Um, we also did sign a new backup goalie. Well, not really new goalie, but Rohan Howes has returned to the Detroit Red Wings as our backup goalie last episode. And, yeah, he's not off to the greatest start, but uh, it's okay. And we still really like having him in with this team, obviously, because... He was a very good Red Wings goalie for quite a few years, and then we eventually let him go because his playoff stats were very inconsistent. And then he went on to win a couple cups with the Anaheim Ducks, and he returned to us in last episode. So, But our team is looking pretty good chemistry-wise, and I think we might end up making the playoffs this year. Will we make it far? I'm not 100% sure, but I think our team is in the right uh, mindset, and everybody is actually getting happier, which is good too. Because our locker room has been not the greatest the last few seasons. So I think letting go of somebody like Jose Stewart like we did a couple episodes ago has definitely helped us out. Now it's interesting because Jose Stewart's actually still a free agent. But we don't really have any like room for him on our roster. There's like, no point in bringing him in. So Because um, he's actually still listed as a top four defenseman. So I'm not going to bring him in because or else he's just going to lose morale sitting on the bench pretty much. So. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what happened in the last episode. And yeah, let's continue simulating and see if this team can get into the playoffs. Because it's a pretty tight race in the Eastern Conference. And except for like that bottom team in the Panthers who are like 20 points below the Sens. But yeah, let's just hope that this team continues to win games in the second half of the season. And maybe we'll make it into the playoffs. But I don't really know if we're going to be making any trades in this episode. It really depends on how we simulate these in the next few months. Uh, but yeah, let's simulate to the end of the month, might as well, and see if this team can continue to win some games halfway through the year. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention I gave Caden Matthews and stuff some extensions, so Matthews has accepted his extension, same with Powell, and same with Savonin, which is awesome to see, because those guys are key pieces right now. So we're losing a couple games, but we did have a 9-1 to win over the Oilers, which is pretty awesome to see. But we do lose four straight games, so that is not a good sign. And we have fallen out of a playoff spot by like four points, so we might need to make some line adjustments quickly. All of a sudden, the team is not in a playoff spot. Hmm. I might move up Reardon and move down Alexandrov. You know, Alexandrov has been really good. Hmm. Or I could swap Seofito. 22 points, so that's pretty good. 20 points, so on the fourth line. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll leave the forward core the same. I mean, Savon is scoring even way more than Dika, but he has less points. I could always adjust the defensive core a little bit, but I don't really know what we could do to get this to be better chemistry-wise. So I think I'll have to leave everything the same. Yeah, I'm going to probably have to just leave this stuff the same and see what happens. Oh, that's probably why Savon is scoring a lot, because that first line power play unit has a plus five overall i didn't even realize that jeez so that's probably why hmm yeah i think we'll just continue to leave the team the way it is even though we've been simulating bad as of late just hope that we bounce back because we are still in the mix for the playoffs obviously but uh 
yeah, we need to start winning some more games after those five straight losses or four straight losses. Because I feel like this team may be over in the first half and they could fall off in the second half, but I hope that doesn't happen. I'm not making a trade with Stapleton involved. Okay. Let's simulate up to a day before the deadline. See if the team can turn it around from those losses we had. There's another loss and another loss. Oh, no. And then a fractured jaw for Phil Powell. That's not good. Let's just go replace player. There's a couple wins in a row. There's three wins in a row. There's four wins in a row. Five. Are we going to get six? Garrison is injured as well. That's not good. Replace player. Phil Powell is back, which means we got to take Phil Powell out because... For some reason, it always likes to put in that injured guy right in that spot that he's not supposed to be. Let's just go like that. And that's good on that front. Go for here. Who is the other depth option? Lutzer. Do you want to play Lutzer there or Sandlac? I think I'll let Sandlac play there since there's a plus three boost. Uh, I'll lose 6-2. to two, Win 6-2. to two, Loss. Win. That was a pretty good month. Definitely a good way to bounce back from those losses we had. We're now 32-25-4. One day before the deadline. We are still not in the playoff spot, which is interesting. We're four points back at the Leafs, but we do have one game in hand. So we got to start winning against divisional opponents. But this is a very tight race for the playoffs because the Penguins are also trying to fight to get in. Like, we might end up being above 500 this year and missing the playoffs. There's a good chance of that happening. Because the Sens are also, like, right in the mix, too. But, like, the Islanders actually are technically in the mix. I wouldn't say the Devils are that much, and then the Rangers aren't, which is really surprising because obviously the Rangers beat us a couple years ago. Hmm. I don't know if we want to make any line adjustments because we play, we're seven and three in our last ten. And I don't know if we want to really make any trades. Let me just take a look at what lines have been like minus if there's any. Top line's been out there for a lot of goals again. Same with the top six in general. Third line is minus. So it looks like we're getting worse. Uh, in terms of keeping the puck out in that. Yeah, Stevenson's stats are getting worse, but he's still been really good. Looks like Rohan House is improving. Defensively, we got a couple minus players. But I don't think it's the end of the world, to be honest. Yeah, I think we'll leave the team the way it is right now. Maybe also that injury to Garrison is hurting our team a little bit. But maybe Sandlack will play the good there with uh, Belanger and Savone in meanwhile. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to make any trades just because I don't really know if this team is going to make the playoffs or not. Like if I knew we were going to be a playoff team, I could always just give up like a first round pick and get somebody really good. But I don't think I'm going to make a trade. But we will still take a look at what's available at this trade deadline just to see if there's something that could help us out. And of course, Nicholas Stapleton has just broken his nose the day before the deadline. Which is a big loss, but whatever. We're going to go in as a buyer just to see what is out there. But I don't know if I'm going to be making any trades for anything. So, in terms of players, interesting players, there's not really anything I would see that I'd like. Like, a lot of these guys are making too much money. Like, this guy would be a really fantastic player, but we don't have a top two defenseman to give. Hmm. Yeah, Arizona's offloading pretty much everybody, it looks like. A lot of these guys have bad cap hits of like $10 million. We're getting offered a first, or trading a first in Stapleton for Matthew Savoy, a third, a fourth, and a fifth. I don't want to do that. Getting rid of Stapleton doesn't really make sense because we don't really have a top six defenseman that could replace him. And then also bringing in somebody like Savoy really doesn't mean anything. He's making $12 million as well. I'm not going to do that. Especially because I have to also give up my first rounder. Because that would probably end up becoming a lottery pick if we missed. Like, Savoy apparently is uh, number three in assists, so he's over point per game, which is really great. Like, he's a really good player. But we don't really have the type of thing, like, that I really want to move for him. And I don't really know where I could slot in somebody that's that good of an overall into our team. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep this the way it is. Yeah, I think I'm going to let our team simulate the rest of the season. I know it sucks in not making trades, but I think just letting the team play out makes maybe a bit more sense. Because I, I don't know still if we're going to be a playoff team or not, but let's get the rest of the season done. So we're going to the 8th because I think Garrison's back around there. Yep, he's back already, actually. 
as we suffer the loss to the Rangers. We want to start winning some games as soon as possible because we might end up missing the playoffs if we drop a couple in a row to start this month, which we do lose three straight games, bounce back with a win, but then lose again. Yeah, we're going to end up missing the playoffs, I think, because the second half of the season has not been that good. We're now nine points back of a wild card spot, eight of them. Yeah, it's going to be very tough to get into the playoffs. The only thing I could think of is just doing some random line adjustments. Okay, so in terms of our lineup, I think I might change some stuff, like maybe swap Savonin and DK, even though DK has been really good. Just try and get something going for this team. Because at this rate, I don't think we're going to make the playoffs unless we win like 10 straight games down the stretch. Hmm, defensively... Damn, Rodriguez takes a lot of pims. I'm going to swap Lilia and Rodriguez. And, oh yeah, Brewer is in because Stapleton's injured. Why is Stapleton losing morale? Oh, ice time-wise again. God damn it, Stapleton. I gave you first line PK time, too. I don't know why he's losing morale. Actually, wait a second. There was one other thing we could do. We could always move Reardon up. And Cecil Pito. Eh, I'll leave that for now. Reardon will be probably on like her top six almost by next season. Maybe her top nine. Okay, let's continue to simulate, but I don't think we're going to make the playoffs because this team is falling apart in this episode, which really sucks because I thought we would maybe end up making the playoffs. But yeah, it's good that I didn't trade away our first round pick, but I think this team is on the right track. There's two straight wins, okay. Maybe we could still make it. Not counting us out yet. Three straight wins and game against Montreal as Stapleton has returned. We should get Stapleton some more ice time. Actually, he's jumped back up to a 78. Oh, yeah, they don't have a good chemistry with Rodriguez. That's why I had Lilia down there. That's right. But let's go back to... Yeah, Stapleton back in. Let me just make sure... Let me go to, like, four on four lines or something. Because I think I'll just try and give him more time on the four on four. Just give him there instead of Samson. Actually, Samson needs to play up there. Do something like that. Because that doesn't affect chemistry, I don't think. 36, 32, and 4. We are now way out of it. We're 5 points still back of the Penguins. So we could still catch them, but the Maple Leafs are right there as well. And we don't have a lot of games left. We only have 10 games left on the season. We're more than likely going to miss the playoffs. After what was a really good start. But, I mean, at least this team is improving, I would say. As we lose three more games, and we're almost back to 500. Oh, this year's been a very up-and-down year. Yeah, we're now falling below the Sens, even. And we can't make the playoffs at all. Hmm. Wow, this season started off so well, but then this episode hit, and... I don't know if I should have made a trade, or what, but this team has just all of a sudden not been that good. Isaac DK gets injured. We'll go replace player. That sucks he's out the rest of the year. But yeah, we're not going to be making the playoffs, unfortunately. I don't know if age just caught up to a lot of these guys or what. And we're probably are hurting ourselves out of a good draft choice as well. 39, 36, and 6. One game left of the season. 84 points. Yeah, we're going to finish like less than 10 points back of the last playoff spot. Which is not too bad, considering how we played last year. So, I'll take that. Let's get this last game done. And we win that one in a shootout against Penguins, who were in a playoff spot. So we finish the season with a 40-36-6 record, 86 points. One of the worst in our division, but only uh, technically 11 points back of the Maple Leafs. And less than 10 points back of the Penguins, who made the playoffs. So I would say it's a successful year. Obviously, we're going to start seeing more decline, which means our team's not going to be as good next year. But unless we make some new offseason moves, but... I think our team's on the right path to getting better, which is good. It just really sucked because we started off the season pretty good, but uh, this last half was not that good. Like, I don't know what our record was in the second half. I didn't do the math, but... Yeah, let's take a look at our player stats and stuff like that for the season. We'll also take a look at what we did wrong and what we did good at. And then we'll also take a look at uh, the draft class. We'll sim up probably to the awards and stuff already, too. Since this episode's only like 15 minutes so far, I think. So, Matthews, 78 points in 82 games. A pretty good year for Caden Matthews. 
despite our team missing out on the playoffs again. He's over a thousand points in his career now as well, so props to Caden Matthews for sticking around with this team for as long as he has. He also signed that extension. 53 points for Boulanger. you love to see it. I actually really like George Boulanger. It was a great uh, trade acquisition from the Islanders, I think it was. He's got 174 career points in 328 games. Uh, Pau, 36 points. Schumacher, 32 points and 22 goals. So Schumacher stepped up. Vishnovsky had 28 points, so I still really like Vishnovsky. He's getting a little bit overpaid, 4.8 or 4.08, which is a little bit too much to pay for 77. But this guy could put up decent numbers when he plays. So he's not a bad player. Lutzer, 3 points in 5 games. I don't know if he's going to be in the lineup next season or what. Left wing wise, holy crap. Savonin had 56 goals, so he has another 50 goal season. And yeah, that was a really good season from a 38 year old. Jeez. And he's now at 931 career goals. So I think he's getting really close to actually catching up to Ovechkin. If he comes back for, or if he plays another full season and scores like another 50 goals plus, he could end up being very close to Ovi. I really hope he sticks around for like the last few years of this franchise mode because. Yeah, he's such a good goal scorer. Like with us in general, he's had over he's had two fifty goal seasons. He's got hundred and thirty seven goals, if my math is correct, which it is, I think. But yeah, he's been a fantastic player. No denying that. Probably one of the best players in this entire franchise mode beyond every single team. And then Isaac Tika, 67 points in 76 games, only twenty nine goals, so he really slowed down and maybe that's why we missed the playoffs. But uh, still a solid season from Dika. Hopefully he continues to get some development. And then Sandlack had 9 points in 15 games as a depth guy, which is really good. So really like that from Sandlack. Right wing wise, Garrison was phenomenal this year. Over point per game, 77 points in 76 games. This was his best season so far. Hopefully he keeps that up next season. Dingman only 63 points and 30 goals though this year. But uh, his potential hasn't dropped, but still... He's not that much of a point producer as he used to be, but still pretty good. He's now at 872 career points. Steel Fido, 35 points in 79 games. Alexandrov, 35 points. That's a good year from Alexandrov. Yeah, because like, he bounced around between like the AHL and the NHL the last few seasons and being a depth type of guy. But he comes back into the lineup and he's been pretty good. And then Brett Reardon in his first season, 33 points. You love to see that. He's going to be probably on our third line next season, I would assume. Yeah, more than likely on our third liner. But, I mean, he fits, like, our team actually pretty well. So, I guess that's good that we have that head coach in Corvo. And then defensively, Biggs, 37 points. I don't know when he's going to retire, but uh, this was a good season from him. Or a solid season from him. Hardy kind of 22 points is pretty solid. Samson, 18 points. Lilia, 14, but a minus 11. Rodriguez had 13 minus 11. He had 109 pims. So, yeah, Demetrius Rodriguez is a very physical defender. He actually had how much fights? 15 fights in the season. Jeez. Stapleton, 11 points. And Brewer had one point. Hmm. Goalie-wise, Stevenson was pretty good. This was one of the best seasons for Stevenson, but obviously it fell off a little bit. But still a really good season from him. Rohan Howes actually finished pretty good, too. Obviously, save percentage-wise and goals against-wise isn't that great, but uh, he had a 9-8-1 record, so he won games. That's interesting. Let's take a look at the entire league for points just to see who led the NHL. So, Cooper for Buffalo and Kukinen. Jeez, Kukinen is insane for Buffalo. This guy is nuts. But he's like, oh, actually, he's a good shooter, too. Yeah, this guy's insane. There's been some really good players in this franchise mode, but uh, yeah, Buffalo looks really good. Valahadi up there as well for Toronto. Let's see goals. Pierrenton wins probably the uh, the Maurice Richard with 58 goals, and then Kugan behind him and Sonnenberg. A lot of goals scored this year. Looks like by teams defensively. Commissarek 97 points. Who the hell are you? I don't even know you. I don't think I've ever seen you before. Okay, this is a really good defenseman, but 97 points. Holy crap! You don't see a defenseman almost breaking 100 points any day. Yolonen, 83. 
Olofsson 78, Goran 74, but there's all the defensemen. Best goalie this year for wins was Colby Castles of Washington with 48 wins. Alexei Puno has returned to the Dallas Stars. That's interesting because he was originally drafted by them, and then we brought him in, and then he went to Arizona, then he went to Vegas, won a cup, then he went to Colorado for a few seasons, won a Vesna, and now he's back in Dallas where he started his career. Um, but he was up there. Interesting. Best goalie for shutouts was Wesley Keith, who had nine shutouts this year for the LA Kings. But Stevenson was second in shutouts this year with six. So I guess we had a lot of good defensive games. And best save percentage by a starter, Colby, Ca Colby Castles with a 916. Best goals against per game by a starter was Eric Malone of the Edmonton Oilers with a 2.54. Looks like the Oilers are looking to go to their third straight Stanley Cup Finals. So that is that. And the best rookie for points is going to be Wes Linden of the Vancouver Canucks. We'll say the son of Trevor Linden, 58 points. Brower right behind him, though, with 57. And Reardon finished in the top 10 for rookie points, which is not too bad. Okay, so that is that. Let's take a quick look at what we did wrong and what we did good at this season. And then we'll sim up to the awards and all that stuff already, retirements-wise, so we can see who ends up retiring. Um, so, in terms of the entire league, where did we finish? We finished 20th, so I don't think there's a good chance we're going to get number one. But, I mean, I have seen teams go from 11 to 1 before, so hopefully that happens to us. Because maybe we could just get another really good forward in. And then this team could be pretty much set. We only scored one more goal than we allowed, which is kind of funny. So I guess our, yeah, our offense all of a sudden just dropped off a lot. And we end up having one of the worst offenses in the entire NHL, which is interesting. So, yeah, maybe we just need to find some better forwards. If I would have picked up a better forward at the trade deadline, maybe we would have made the playoffs. I don't know if I should have done that or what. And then goals against per game-wise, we were right around the mid-table. So our goals against wasn't as good as it was earlier in the year as well. So both these kind of dropped off a bit since we last looked. Our power play percentage, though, was still pretty solid. It also dropped off a little bit. Actually, it was right around mid-table as well, so it looks like everything dropped off, and all the other teams did better. Our penalty kill got considerably worse as well. And, yeah, it was like 76%. I think it was earlier. It was like 78%. But, yeah, so pretty much everything just dropped off in the second half of the season, and that's why we missed. But at least we still had an okay record this year, not like last year. So there's that. And now let's sim up to the awards and find out who wins the Stanley Cup is who we're going to lose to retirement. Let's just take a look at... Uh, wait, let me go to edit player for a sec. How old are these players again? I just want to see who might retire. So Savonin might retire. Matthews, Biggs, and Damon I don't think are going to retire. Pow I don't think is going to retire yet. So Savonin's probably the only one we might lose. We actually also might lose Rohan Howes, so... Let me show you guys what Rohan House looks like, just in case. I don't think I've ever showed you guys in the thumbnail before, but um, appearance. So this is Rohan House. This looks like a serious dude. Good to see him back in Detroit, but uh, he might end up retiring this year. There's a good chance of that. And maybe we raise his jersey to the Raptors, you know. I don't know if I should do like a Hall of Fame type of thing, though, for, my, uh, for this mode or what. Like induct players into the Hall of Fame, like one player from each position. Or multiple players from each position. But we passed our owner goals, which is good. Let's zoom up to the draft now. Deke is back. Let's just go best lines. But who is going to win the Stanley Cup? I don't think it's going to be Edmonton because they lost Lundberg last offseason. So who knows? Grand Rapids already got eliminated in the AHL. That sucks. Because they did go to the finals a few years ago, I'm pretty sure, right? Maybe not, actually. I don't even remember. Um, so Dallas is going to win the Stanley Cup, so Punov's, I think, has won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, so, or maybe not back-to-back, -back, but he's won two Stanley Cups now since leaving us, which is interesting, and then the Stockton Heat are going to win the Calder Cup. Let's take a look at those individual awards. I think that's the first time Dallas has won the Cup in this franchise mode, if I'm not mistaken, but awards, so Dallas wins the Stanley Cup, Edmonton won the President's Trophy. And it was Dallas in Boston in the Stanley Cup Finals. So that's the first time Boston's definitely gotten there. Because, like I said, the first few years they made the playoffs. Then they were terrible for, like, a long, long time. But it's good to see them actually get to the finals 
after all those years. Individual award-wise, uh, Larry Cooper is going to win the Art Ross as well as the Hart. Thomas Eric Winston Norris, not a surprise. Springist to Lady Bing, Broward to Calder, Jamnov to Con Smythe for the Dallas Stars. Eric Malone wins the Vesna and he wins the Jennings. Jass is going to win the Bill Masterton. Shifley wins the Jack Adams. Okay, I don't know about that one, Chief, but that's kind of weird. Mark Shifley winning the Jack Adams. I didn't even realize he was a head coach for Carolina, but okay. Timo Valahati is going to win his second uh, Selkie in the last three years. Cooper wins it, Lindsay, and Purinton wins the Richard. Individual words for the AHL. Anybody for our AHL affiliate? Probably not. Yeah, nobody down there in the AHL won an award. Hmm. Interesting. Let's take a look at the playoff tree for fun, too. And also, we'll take a look at that cup winning Dallas team just in case there's any former players of ours. But, uh, yeah, that's basically how the playoffs went. So, Dallas went to three game sevens. And then they also won one series in five games. But they took a lot of games to win that Stanley Cup. So, a lot of hard effort went into that uh, cup winning win. So, good on the Dallas Stars for winning. Boston had an easier time, it looks like. They beat Montreal in sixth. And they beat Buffalo in seven. Which, that one was probably a tough series for them. And they also beat the Canes in five. Interesting. So, actually, we're going to take a look at the Dallas Stars roster. Because I almost forgot about that again. That's what happens when you record in the morning, you know. Just, you forget when you're, what you're saying and all that stuff sometimes. So, um, so this is the Dallas Stars Cup winning team. So, they got Delmas, Wilm, who used to play in Tampa. We played him a lot of times in the playoffs before. You guys probably recognize his name, but nobody else I recognize really. Raphael James wins the Stanley Cup, I believe, against his former team. Yep, against his former team. I remember that guy being in Boston. That's interesting. Because I'll show you guys what I mean about how Boston was so bad earlier in the years. Because you can see right here, he was with Boston. He was minus 34, all that stuff. Like His plus minus is terrible in his career because of his time in Boston. Like a minus 68 one year. And then he goes to uh, Dallas, and he's turned it around the last few years. But, yeah, his time in Boston was not good. Uh, Trey Dwyer. Dallas Graves. There's actually a guy named Dallas in Dallas. That's actually crazy. But Dallas Graves literally sounds like, I don't know, a musician for some reason. Uh, Chase Hill. Herme. What else we got here? Jamnov. Hanula. Oh, yeah, Nicholas Hanula. I forgot about him. The guy that went literally right before Dika in the draft and is probably, yeah, a lot better than Dika is. He wins the Stanley Cup at 22 and the Blockov. Defensively, no former defensemen of ours, I believe. Yeah. And then in terms of goalie-wise, yep, they put, have still Punos is what I was mentioning. So yeah, Punos has won two cups in the span of the last four seasons. And he's also won a Vesna in that span too. Interesting. So that is that lets him up to the retirements, and then that'll be pretty much it. I'll also show you guys like the draft class and the contract situation, but so Chicago's got first overall, followed by Ottawa, Columbus, Calgary. So yeah, we didn't move up at all. We actually fell back one spot. So we have lucky number 13 in the draft. So sucks that we didn't uh, become that team that moved up randomly from like 12 to 1, but whatever. Um, so, retirement-wise, so Tim Stutzel is the best player to retire. Not even point-per-game-wise, but still. Tate Buckley, a former player of ours, retires almost with a 1,000 points. He was really good when he left us, like, when he went to Pittsburgh. He all of a sudden started putting up a lot better numbers than he did with us for, like, that brief bit. Like, he only had 29 points in 82 games. Then all of a sudden, he's over point-per-game in Pittsburgh, which is nuts. I'm going to be who he was playing with. Philippe Guerron is going to retire. There is one of our channel legends, I'd say. Well, not really a legend because we trade him away decently young. But, uh, yeah, Phil Guerron, he's played two years in Washington to end off his career. But, man, he had some interesting times with us. Like, he played with us for, like, six seasons, seven seasons, maybe, maybe even eight. And then he goes to Anaheim, wins the Stanley Cup with them, I'm pretty sure, with Rohan Howes. Then he goes to Carolina for, like, quite a number of years. Then he goes to Washington, but, yep, there it is. Philippe Guerron, best of luck in retirement, man. 951 points in almost 1,400 games. 
What else we got here? Any other former players of ours? Because I always like looking for former players. Lacerte retires. So there's another former player. Damn. It always sucks when you see all these former players retiring. So Stefan Lacerte retires with the Carolina Hurricanes with 305 points in just under 1,200 games. And he only played eight games in his last season, but he was almost point per game, which would have been pretty crazy if he kept that up. He was actually a phenomenal depth defenseman for the last year for the Canes. But, uh, yeah, he played with San Jose because we had to let him go. He played with San Jose for a number of years, then eventually plays in Carolina for his last four years of his career. And he actually played in the playoffs this year, and he almost won a Stanley Cup in his last year. I don't think he won any other cups after leaving us, right? No, he never won a Stanley Cup because he wasn't even with our cup winning team. So best of luck in retirement, Stefan Lacerte. And another one that you guys might not remember is Joachim Tuparainen. This guy was another first round pick of ours. We traded this guy away pretty early on to the Vancouver Canucks into his career because of the fact we already had like Jose Stewart and stuff making it. Like we didn't really have the defensive room for him. Like even though he was a high up pick, we had to trade him away. And he had a pretty good career, I would say. Because as you can see all the way back here, we played him three years in the AHL. Well, technically two and a half. Then he plays two years in the NHL, and eventually we didn't really have the space for him. His plus minus was really good, but we had to get rid of him, so we dealt him away. He didn't play an entire season because uh, Vancouver scratched him for some reason. But then he goes to Vancouver, and he plays really good defensively. Then goes to San Jose, where he's been phenomenal plus minus wise for his entire career up to this point. And then he was minus for two seasons, but he stayed with San Jose for a very long time. And then he was in Washington for his last season where he was plus good. So at plus 128 in his career, which is pretty good. Um, and yeah, he never won a Stanley Cup either, it looks like. So unless he was a depth defenseman one year, but I don't think so. So best of luck in retirement, Joachim to Brynan. I didn't expect this much former players of ours to retire, but... That's what happens, I guess, when you're late in these franchise modes. Any other players? Uh, Mitchell Acker also retires. 34 points. Or not 34 points. 34 years of age. This guy was with us briefly. I believe he won a cup with us, didn't he? Yeah, I think he was on our cup winning team, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, yeah, he retires. Best of luck in retirement. We briefly had him anyways. Harvey Jenner retires. One of our earlier trade acquisitions in this franchise mode. He's been a free agent for the last six years. But, uh, yeah, he had some okay seasons. His best season, obviously, being there with 44 points in his first season. But uh, after that, he really bounced around. So, best of luck in retirement, Harvey. Uh, wait, any other players or not? But a lot of decently are decent former players of ours that you guys probably would remember. Some of which we could say are channel legends, I don't know. So those are the retirements for that. Goalie-wise, any retirements? Yes, there is some goalie retirements, former goalie retirements. So Zharkov and Ahaz retires, but Francis Nguyen retires. And he had a really underrated career. 294 games played, 143 wins, 81 losses, 23 OT losses, 17 shutouts. And he was mostly a career backup, I'm pretty sure. A 9-12 save percentage and a 2.7 goals against. Yeah, he had a really interesting career. Because let's go back to his earlier years again as well. He played quite a number of years in Grand Rapids. Then we gave him a chance. And he was a fantastic backup for us for quite a number of years behind like Rohan Howes. Then eventually we had to let him go. He plays one year in Vancouver, plays one year in Ottawa, one year in Arizona. Then returns to us and plays for two years. Then he goes to Calgary where he was phenomenal. And then he goes to the AHL for one year. And then you, I guess he was a free agent for the final season. But yeah, he was a really underrated player. Pretty solid numbers. His playoff numbers weren't fantastic. But uh, yeah, his preseason numbers, fantastic. His regular season numbers, very underrated, I would say. Best of luck in retirement, Francis. And I think that is it for former players. Yep. And that means we didn't lose anybody, right? Yep, and Jose Stewart also didn't retire, which is interesting. So he's going to be a free agent again. And Savonin didn't retire, we just realized again. So Savonin's going to be back to score more goals next year, which is great to see. Uh, we do lose a Grand Rapids coach, but that doesn't really that matter that much. And Philippe Garon is now a scout. Oh my god, I got to get that guy if I can. I didn't realize Philippe Garon was going to become a scout. 
So we might have to uh, sign Phil Garon as one of our scouts, but it depends what he's good at scouting. So I guess I'll have to check that out in the next episode, but uh, that's that. Let me take a quick look at the draft class and the contract situation, and then I'll be it for this episode. I took a little bit too long looking at those retirements, but whatever. So we have the 13th overall pick, which means we might get going with Esteban Guerin. Ooh, two years away. Yeah, I might go with Esteban Guerin. There's also Sedin, Reza. Oh, it's one year away. Okay, maybe we go with Reza. Yeah, we'll probably end up going with Reza because we could use some centers. So that is that. Any guys to pin? Any like low elites? Because if there's some low elites, that'd be good. There is a couple low elites, but they're supposed to go super late in the draft. Probably guys that won't be able to make this franchise mode, but we will still pin them. Just in case we want to take somebody like that in the 7th round. This guy looks decent as well, and we'll pin him. So there we go. And let's take a quick look at the contract situation. So up for renewal this offseason is Belanger, Biggs, Alexandrov. So yeah, these are going to be kind of expensive. And yeah, but we'll probably get them all back. But uh, I think our team is maybe going to make the playoffs next year. I wouldn't say we are going to, but I'm surprised actually Rohan House didn't retire yet. Hmm, that's kind of surprising. Do we bring him back as a backup? Probably. Just because he's a legend, so. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Detroit Ravens franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the draft and resign stage as we look to get this team back to being a playoff team. Because we only have like two seasons left, I think. So let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll see you guys next time.